Hi everybody, our topic today is acceleration. Most people have a pretty fundamental idea of acceleration. If something's accelerating, it's speeding up. We understand that. It turns out that's not exactly what it is in physics, although that's part of it. But think about it this way. Let's suppose you had one of these guys. Yeah, that's a Corvette. And you wanted to accelerate from zero to 50 miles per hour as fast as you can. Maybe it would take four or five seconds. Let's go with five seconds to make it easy. And let's suppose somebody else, your friend, has another extremely cool car, one of these guys. That's, a, I think, a 65 Volkswagen Beetle with a car top carrier. Pretty good. They could also accelerate from 0 to 50 miles per hour. Does that mean that they have the same acceleration? Of course not. You see, it might take 20 seconds for the Volkswagen to do it, whereas the, the VET can do it in much less, 4 or 5 seconds. So somehow acceleration is related to not just the change in, in velocity, but also to the amount of time that that change takes. And that's why we define acceleration as the rate at which velocity changes. And remember, when you talk about a rate, typically you're talking about how fast some change occurs divided by how much time it takes. Okay? An important thing to remember here is that velocity is in fact a vector. And that means that acceleration is also going to be a vector. Well, what's a vector? I'm sure you remember a vector is something that has both magnitude and direction. And so that means any change of velocity, speeding up, slowing down, or just changing direction implies that there's an acceleration. There's acceleration just when you change direction? Yeah, even if you keep exactly the same speed. We'll get to that quite a bit later. For today, we're going to stick with straight line motion. So let's suppose that you're on a bicycle or walking, and your velocity vector begins like that. But then a moment later, you're going a little bit faster. And with the succeeding time, you go faster and faster and faster. Of course, this one over here would be called your final velocity vector. The initial velocity vector is all the way up front here, but let's just be concerned with the change during this time period, the last time period. So for that particular time period, we'll call this the initial velocity vector. Now, what that means is that if we take the change in velocity, and don't forget what change means. Change always means final minus initial. That means if we take that final velocity vector and subtract the initial velocity vector, that means add the opposite of the initial velocity vector, we get the change by going from where we started to where we finished. Remember, first initial point to final terminal point, that's how you add vectors. So the change in velocity is forward. That would be the change in velocity, the change of velocity right there. And that's what causes it to speed up, or that's related to it speeding up. On the other hand, let's suppose you're already moving fast, and in one a moment later, you're moving a little bit slower, and with each succeeding moment, you go slower and slower and slower. If we do the same thing, but we call this the final velocity vector, and we call this the initial velocity vector, then the change in velocity would be that final vector minus, remember, adding the opposite, of the initial, the change is from where you start to where you finish, and the error direction matters a lot. The change in velocity now is a negative vector. That is, is pointing in the opposite direction of how things are moving. And that's generally true of acceleration. If you're accelerating in the same direction that you're moving, you are speeding up. If you're accelerating in the opposite direction from which you're moving, you are slowing down. If you're accelerating in a different direction entirely, well, that's where you get changes of direction. So average acceleration, remember it involves time, is defined very simply as, note the bar to indicate average, final velocity, I'm sorry, change in velocity divided by change in time. That is the final velocity minus the initial velocity divided by the elapsed time. Remember, we just used T for elapsed time. A really important formula, one of the fundamental ideas in kinematics. The unit that we typically use for acceleration in physics is meters per second squared. 
for things in the macroscopic world. For something really tiny, it might be centimeters per second squared. What does that mean? Well, if you look at the formula here, you have velocity, which is typically in meters per second, divided by time, which is typically in seconds, and so you get meters per second per second. Now, it doesn't have to be that. For example, the Corvette we were talking about at the beginning of this lesson accelerated from 0 to 50 miles per hour in 5 seconds. That would be a change of 50 miles per hour divided by 5 seconds. That unit would be 10 miles per hour per second. That's kind of a strange sounding unit, but it makes perfectly good sense. The key is to understand that it's always a distance unit divided by two time units. So now let's try an example of this. A bicycle's velocity changes from 6.2 meters per second east to 1.4 meters per second west in 6.34 seconds. Find its average acceleration. You've got the formula. I hope you have a calculator. Why don't you pause the video and give this a shot and then come back when you're finished or when you get stuck. Okay, you're back. That was quick. My suggestion for doing these problems, because they can get harder than this initial one, is to start by choosing a positive direction. In this case, I chose east as the positive direction because the bicycle is going east and then west. You could have chosen west. North would have been a pretty bad choice. We also need to list our variables. For example, we know that it started at 6.2 meters per second east, so I write that as the initial velocity and I make it positive. We also know that it finished at 1.4 meters per second west, so that's the final velocity, and we make it negative because it's west. The other piece of information we're given is that this took 6.34 seconds. We also are given that we're trying to find the average acceleration, and I always like to list the variable we're trying to find because then we have four variables and we can look for the formula that fits. And so this is the problem that we're going to try to work out, and it's pretty easy to do. So what are we trying to find? Well, we're trying to find average acceleration, and it is final velocity minus initial velocity over time. The final velocity is negative 1.4 meters per second minus the initial velocity, which is positive 6.2, so we're subtracting a positive meters per second, divided by a time of 6.34 seconds. Now a little bit of quick work on your calculator, and you'll find that that ends up being an answer of negative 1 point one nine eight seven and a whole bunch of more stuff meters per second divided by seconds which is meters per second squared but of course we need correct significant figures on this dude because you see we don't want to be lying and saying that we know the answer to the nearest ten thousandth we certainly don't this numerator is going to be negative 7.6 that's only two significant figures the denominator has three. Chain is only as strong as, what is it? What it yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, it's weakest link. So we round to two significant figures, and so we write it as negative 1.2 meters per second per second, which we simplify to meters per second squared. And that is how you do an acceleration problem. Make sense? I knew it would. Think about the motion of the object. The bicycle is starting by going east pretty fast, but it slows down, slows down, slows down, comes to a stop, and then starts heading west, speeding up. It's almost as if it had a negative acceleration at the beginning and a positive acceleration at the end. But in fact, it had a negative acceleration the whole time. It's just that at the beginning, it was moving in the positive direction, but accelerating in the negative direction, so it was slowing down. At the end, it was moving in the negative direction and accelerating in the negative direction, so it was speeding up. Remember, when velocity and acceleration are opposite, an object is slowing. When they're in the same direction, the object's speeding up. Make sense? Of course it does. So, what do we have next? Well, the kind of acceleration we're going to be dealing with here is called uniform acceleration. Uniform simply means that the acceleration is not changing. 
but unchanging acceleration does not mean unchanging velocity. If you have unchanging acceleration, that means you're going five miles per hour per second acceleration. Your velocity is in fact changing the whole time because you have acceleration. Got it? So don't mix those two things up. Acceleration, <clears throat> when it's uniform, is defined as final velocity minus initial velocity over time. If we rearrange that, we can say that final velocity equals initial velocity plus acceleration times time. That's just multiplying both sides by time and then adding the initial velocity to both sides. These are important formulas for you to be able to use. They're actually the same formula. So let's try this problem. While approaching an airport, an airplane changes velocity from 156 meters per second at a rate of negative 2.6 meters per second squared until it reaches a velocity of 135 meters per second. How much time passed while this happened? That's kind of an interesting question. First thing worth noting is that the acceleration rate, negative 2.6 meters per second squared, is not changing. It's constant, constant acceleration. But notice that the velocity does change just like I said before. So let's see what we have here. If we have an initial velocity of 156 meters per second, that's what's given, and a final velocity of 135 meters per second, the plane is still moving forward. Furthermore, we know that we have a constant acceleration of negative 2.6 meters per second squared. What are we trying to figure out again? We're trying to figure out how much time it took. Well, now that we have four variables listed, including one unknown, we just find a formula that includes those four variables. As it turns out, either of the formulas on the previous slide will work. So I'm gonna try this one. I'll write it out for you again, that the final velocity is the initial velocity plus acceleration times time. Well, the final velocity is 135 meters per second equals the initial velocity of 156 meters per second plus the acceleration. Now we have to be a little careful here. That's negative 2.6 times t. All right, now do your algebra and see what you come up with. Do you get that negative 21 equals negative 2.6 t. And then if you continue solving, do you get that that time t is positive 8.0769 and so on seconds. Of course, we need to round that two significant figures on either side. So we round that to 8.1 seconds, not negative 8.1 seconds, 8.1 seconds. Put the unit on there, that matters. It's not 8.1 hours, it's not 8.1 years. It's that simple. If you remember to list your variables, pulling the information from the word problem, these are gonna be so much easier for you. And that's how you work with uniform acceleration. You list the variables, and you find the formula that works and do some algebra. All right? All right, have fun with this. Get a little bit more practice and you'll be great at it.